Clearly, if you had three quality receivers, you weren't sitting one of them on the bench for a second tight end. Like, well, he, they could have a cheerleader over there. <laughs> Jarvis Landry, <laughs> Odell's biggest cheerleader. <laughs> His favorite things are cheering on Odell, trying to be Odell, <laughs> and, and playing Pro Bowl skill competition. <laughs> <laughs> he lives for that stuff. <laughs> playing winning football. Pro Bowl so <laughs> yeah. But he, he can play some bad boys. Welcome in to the Pay Dirt Profile Podcast. Dante, I'm here with Tony, Jamar, Kyle. So we got the the full squad. <laughs> exactly. So welcome Jamar back to to the group, back to the pod. How's everybody doing today? We good? Hanging in there. Got a good workout in. Yeah, bro. Ridiculous workout in. Oh my god, my <laughs> arms are hurting so bad. <laughs> we were doing a we were doing a card workout where each card is a different exercise. And I was trying to trade some exercises because I was getting posed. <laughs> and uh, Jamar hit me with that Bill O'Brien trade. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It was, it was not good. Um, I'm Two def- for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Got the got the David Johnson end of the deal. Uh, well, we're, we're back here today. We're trying to talk a little bit about the NFL draft. We, uh, just like everybody else, took a look at this virtual thing we had going and and I think it was I think it was great. I think, you know, it brought everybody together. There were some numbers and I could be wrong on them, but I thought that they said that they raised something like a hundred and thousand a hundred thousand or hundred million dollars. Yeah, it was uh, like eighty million or something like that. Yeah, it was it was a ton of money that got raised over the three days. Um, you know, everybody's doing a mock draft and things of that nature. So it was really cool to um you know, kind of dive in and, and be able to talk to everybody about it and, and things of that nature. So um, today we want to kind of take a look at our mock draft uh, that we did with the community. Um, we're not going to take too, too much time, but um, kind of just uh, dive we in. We will take a bunch of time. We <laughs> always say, oh, this is going to be a short pod. Oh, about to be a short and then we end it with Two hours later. an hour and a half long pod. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll try our best. We'll try our best. Um, so real quick, we just wanted to highlight that we had, um, the first three picks, uh, all same team, same player. Um, everybody in the world had Joe Burrow and and Chase Young, uh, but we wanted to shout out, uh, Adam who had Jeff Okuda, cornerback going to the Lions. In our mock, we didn't have Tua going to the Chargers, but Yvonne, she had uh, commented in. Or sorry, she had commented in with Justin Herbert. I know Jamar is happy about that one. Yeah, I was like, oh, I'm pretty sure I've been saying this for weeks now. (laughs) We don't want no bum Tua, right? We good. We're going to go get the right quarterback for the future, which we did. Uh, Yeah, Yvonne called that one. We had same player, same team, Jedrick Wills to the Browns. Um, we had Andrew uh, B. on Instagram as well as Adam who called those ones. We had C.D. Lamb going to the Raiders. Not the right pick, but right position. Uh, Zay had Henry Ruggs, and he was adamant about it, but everybody outvoted him. Uh, so we should have listened to him there. We had Javon Kinlaw going 14th. I had no idea it was going to be a trade, but it worked out. Um, and then a couple down the list, we had a uh, cornerback going to the Raiders, wide receiver going to the Eagles, wrong player, but right position. And then Titans, we had a tackle and Kansas City Chiefs, we had a running back. Um, again, wrong player, but right position. So it was really fun to do. Um, definitely wanted to shout some of those people out. But what we wanted to do really today was kind of get into some of the team grades, uh, kind of do a... Uh, team by team kind of break down look at the divisions together um, and see how everybody did in the draft and free agency so we'll start with the uh, what is this the AFC West the Denver Broncos Kansas City Chiefs LA Chargers and Vegas Raiders and we when, when we saw those guys play Bleacher Report gave them A- minus for the Broncos B for the Chiefs C plus for the Chargers and C minus for the Raiders as far as their draft grade. Uh, what what were initial thoughts on that division? Oh, cool stuff. Cool <laughs> stuff. We don't need the explicit yet. But looking at this report, this report pissed me off. Uh, I mean, C plus. I feel like the Chargers. Well, of course, I'm biased, but I think they should at least be a B B minus at the lowest. 
um, you know, they they pick up their quarterback of the future. Like that's not worth more than a C plus. Um, you know, they made you know a decent pickup at running back, which you know will take some some of the reps from Austin Eckler, keep him healthy. Um, you know, we got you know a good receiver at the end there. I don't know. I feel like C plus is not to mention this, this damn linebacker that we gave up two picks for or whatever. Like, <laughs> I still good, feel. Though. I still. I mean, he's good. Like, I I feel. I still feel some type of way about it. Um, giving up, you know, both the second and the third to get him, but it is what it is. Um, I still think it's worth more than a C plus grade, though. Um, I don't know how the Chiefs graded up above. Like the Chargers, yeah. So, Chargers get like you said, quarterback of the future, and a starting linebacker immediately. Basically swapped and gave a third round pick, which is is not terrible. Chiefs picked up a luxury running back, who's going to split reps in the first round, and you know I don't I'm not you know following the Chiefs all the way through the whole draft, but that can't be better. Yeah. Yeah, their their whole draft there, and then the Broncos though had had they got an A minus, the, the, but they did the same thing the Raiders did, loaded up receivers, and we give them one an A minus, one a C minus. But I think I think the the nature of the the picks kind of were different for the Broncos and the Raiders. I think the Broncos kind of lucked into getting guys that fell, so they got the benefit of the, of the doubt, whereas the Raiders selected guys maybe a little bit ahead of their, you know, projected draft positions. I mean, if you're looking at Henry Ruggs versus Jerry Judy, it, it depends on who you think is the better prospect, but if you think that Judy is better, the team that got him after Ruggs is going to benefit from that. So. Right, but every mock had them two spots apart, three spots apart. So right. it's not like the, it was Jalen Rager versus Jerry Judy. Right. Like, they were high up on everyone's boards. So I got the players for Kansas City. They had uh, picks in the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, seventh. So the notables were uh, Clyde edwards Alaire. Um They took Willie Gay in the second round, a linebacker who was probably – you know, second to fourth round pick, depending on who you talk to. He had a, a couple of off the field kind of things, but uh, athletic guy, uh, Lucas Niang, day two type of uh, tackle. Um, Ladarius Sneed to play in the secondary, um, and then they had a, a couple of uh, a filler guys to um, hit some needs. Uh, I mean, nothing. So, nothing screamed immediate starter. Like who's who's going to start right away for them? N- I mean, Edward Delaire maybe, Niang mm. maybe, Gay Junior maybe. I mean, I think that those guys are all better cased as, uh, you know, I'm going to be a rotational piece, maybe a starter. But none of those guys are but, like impact right away. Chargers drafted a, a starting linebacker. Mm-hmm. He's going to start for them. They traded up to get him, and they got a quarterback of the future. I mean, I t- I think I'm just looking at their picks. They, you, you, I have no idea why. I still think a C plus is 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 low considering the first two people they picked up. But they did after that. You know, they picked up a running back, but then they only had three more picks, and they picked up two wide receivers and a safety. Um, yeah, but and KJ Hill is a is kind of a steal yeah, at yeah. the position that they got him. Seventh round, but yeah, I don't know. These grades are whack, though. Yeah, yeah. They, I mean, we looked at these and who's no one's gonna just flat out give an F. Yeah, well, that's kind of disrespectful. So, well, like, when you look at some of that, well, I was I was talking to Zay and you know about his Raiders and he was happy with uh, some of the selections that they made. I mean, they definitely got faster. They definitely got more versatile. Um, there are a couple of picks that may not have been, you know, the most advised. I mean, you already have uh, receiver depth, and then you go out and get more of them. But, I mean, you're trying to do what you can to give Derek Carr weapons. So, um, I mean, whatever, Kyle, you can, Lynn Bowden. whatever you can do to ruin Lynn Bowden. <laughs> I mean, we we probably would have liked to see him go to a place where he would have a better role, but or just announce him as a receiver. Yeah, uh, I mean, hey, maybe he 
plays some running back. I don't know. I don't know how Jamar feels about Josh Jacobs getting his passing game work taken by. Yeah, he can go somewhere else. <laughs> um, so what, what do you what do you guys think about grade wise? Broncos A minus. Are we amending that for our own sakes? What do we What do we think? High or lower? Too high. A minus is. Uh, I, I could I have. Could be, it takes a lot to get an A. Like there's there's way too many A's on this uh on this draft grade sheet. Yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna change we're gonna change some of these. We but when the lowest that, profile like, grades like the ultimate we'll see who got a D from from them. Like that's high, that's a high grade for them too. Oh, so yeah. like <laughs> the actual grading scale is probably not all that. So you, you add a minus to everything, bump everything down yeah. one. So uh let's say Let's say B plus for Denver. Kansas City is a B, higher or lower. Uh, I probably I would probably put them a little lower. All right, they did that. But they didn't need anything either, so it's kind of like yeah. We'll talk about it with this next division. B minus. All right, and then he gave the Chargers B minus instead of a C plus, and uh, probably closer than it should be. And I think the Raiders. I think the Raiders can get a C instead of a. The C-. Raiders got more starters than teams out there. Yeah. Okay. Um, Tony, want to give us the the next the next division? Uh, AFC. We got Baltimore Ravens. Uh, they got an A in their draft. The Cincinnati Bengals got an A minus. The Cleveland Browns got an A minus. And the Pittsburgh Steelers got a B plus. Some high, that's some high uh, <laughs> grades. <laughs> the whole division uh, got dang. got better. That's what you're saying. <laughs> so the whole division got better, but according to this, the Bengals are still coming in last. <laughs> and the and the Steelers got better, but Not they're even. dropping five positions yeah. in the. The projected, yo. yeah, and we didn't talk about that a lot with the last one, and we'll post this. Um, we'll post this spreadsheet up, but we took a look. Bleacher Reports twenty twenty end of season finish. They did a power rankings one through thirty two, and then they did post draft power rankings. Um, I think that they were discussing the Pittsburgh Steelers. They had a. a 2020 finish at ninth overall, but then post draft are 14th overall after having a solid uh, free agency grade of B and uh, B minus draft grade. I mean, I think Kyle hit the hit nail on the head. I don't know if we can we can parse too too much on the actual grade and kind of just discuss what we think because at the end of the day, I mean, all this stuff is kind of subjective. I don't know how you can say two two people did a above average unless they just thought all the people who passed them you know were spectacular like the they had somebody who passed them they had the buffalo bills pass them which you know they had a pretty good off season but then they had the cardinals pass them so i mean we're going to talk about the cardinals later but i mean i don't think we should worry too too much about it but i mean i think the steelers did a good job of uh you know surrounding Ben with a little bit more talent. Chase Claypool is a good addition for them. Um they've done a really good job at identifying receivers in the draft. So like if they're ta- yeah if they're taking somebody like they must see something. And we saw DK Metcalf was a similar receiver to Chase Claypool as far as what they can do well. And we saw the Steelers just say, okay, this is what you can do. We're going to ask you to do that. They did the same thing with Juju as far as run after the catch. They did the same thing as Martavis Bryant with having him be a deep threat. They know what these guys can do well, and they're going to ask him to do that. Well, I think if you look, I mean, the best team in that division, FC North, Baltimore Ravens, Mm -hmm. the best just got better, right? Yeah. It's something that we've talked about here before. Clearly. When, When you can... You don't have to reach for stuff, and you can you can actually you know be comfortable with the, what what you're doing. Uh, they just sat back. They got Patrick Queen in the first, uh, really talented linebacker from LSU. They just hang hang, and they get J.K. Dobbins in the second, one of the top backs. Yeah, uh, I thought he was better than Edward Zilair, and that's more of a a feel thing for the those two teams, I think, because they both were luxury picks more or less. But Dobbins is going to take over when Ingram's out. 
Uh, they got Devin Duvernay, who fits what they like to do with the receivers. He's going to take over that slot role, probably from Willie Sneed. He's just a, a speedy receiver. And then you look down the list, they got they got Pro, who's a receiver from uh, SMU. He's all right. Uh, but they just were able to, to add guys that made them deeper. Right. You know, so so we talked about earlier when when teams are looking for starters, you know, at this point down in that draft they don't need to try and hit a gem. They just take the best guy. They took some some D tackles, some guards, linebacker, receivers, and all of a sudden they're better again. Yeah, I mean one of one of uh, my friends who listens, uh, Jason, he's a Ravens fan, and um, he was kind of pounding the table for Patrick Queen when we were doing our community mocks and. Um, Originally, we had Zach Bond, and, you know, Queen was a great pick, and it was a good second place, and, you know, their their need and in the interior, they they addressed it with um, both Queen and Malik Harrison, who I really liked out of Ohio State. Um, you know, Jason was talking about he had, he was a really big fan of the value picks that they made, um, just kind of like you mentioned. Like, they moved around the board spectacularly. Um, you know, they, they have – all the picks at their disposal like they do the same i'm going to trade you know multiple picks so that way i have multiple swings at the bat uh, when draft day comes and and you know if guys hit great if guys don't hit you know they had a lot of a lot of options how do y'all feel about the, what do you guys think about the value of a fourth round pick uh i mean i think it i think it definitely deals with what are the other picks do you have like if you have a fourth round pick but you don't have a second or you don't have a third or, or you know, you don't have a fifth, sixth, or seventh. Like it, it's a day three pick, but you know, you definitely can find value there. I think so. Do you think the Browns taking a tight end, another tight end in the fourth round, should take them out of that A category, well, that so, A grade? So I was just That's kind of question. thinking about the Browns. How much yeah. pressure is going to continue to mount for Baker Mayfield? You know, they had another good draft, right. another good offseason, mm-hmm. added More a, another tight end. I don't know where they're going to play all these guys. I'm sure Njoku is going to be out mm-hmm. at some point. Uh, but Stefanski came from the, the Vikings. Mm-hmm. He uh, he was a guy who has been successful playing with multiple tight ends. I think what they're going to do is going to really help Baker. But they got better at the line again this offseason. I mean, if he doesn't have a good season again, up to what they're looking for, they may be looking somewhere else. Call my bust and let's move on. Call my bust and let's move on. Don't be a hater, but, bro. But it's, one, it's, that, it's that franchise thing too, I'll right? I'll jump on that train. Bro. Yeah. Oh, like man. The, Brown, the Browns are so bad in general. Like, Who's to say that he wasn't going to be successful anywhere or everywhere else but the Browns? Right. Like, they're so dysfunctional. And to think that that guy, as good as he was in college, was going to be able to change everything. Um, it feels like they've done a good job, but like when they actually start playing football, it's like it's still the Browns. Yeah. Well, well, I think I think Baker Mayfield did what he was supposed to do as far as like the bravado and the brashness that people don't really, you know, feel is is necessary at all the times. And I think he he overdoes it sometimes, but um, like you actually had people starting to believe in that. In that team, and you know, when when he had that really great run as a rookie in that off season, um, people were really starting to believe. The problem is, is like you said, that they have to actually capitalize now. It's not it's not good enough to believe anymore. He did his job in making people actually believe the Browns could do something. If he can't, and as much as I like him, like they will need to take a step back. If he crashes and burns this year, like clearly he's going to take a step forward. You would hope so. Okay. Oh. Hey, hey. <laughs> but like the, the other thing is this: like, if if the expectations were not so high early on, they went eight and eight, seven and seven, eight, one. Yeah, this year. yeah. Like history of that franchise says that's a good starting point. Exactly. But like they did so much this last off season that when they just went. Like five hundred, it was like, oh, that's trash. Yeah, well, they're strutting, strutting but like, their stuff. But like and... the last fifteen years, that would have been something to to be excited. Yeah, they're about. throwing parades. Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but now all of a sudden we're looking to win the division. Right. Like let's get above five hundred. It's only going to be year three, but they put so much pressure on him with with everything that they've done. Yeah. It feels like a bad half of a season, and Stefanski's going back to Keenum, and <laughs> and. 
and, that would and be to, crazy. to Jamar's point, though, I, I do think that that does go into it. We're talking about all these teams. Um, we're we're going to get to the 49ers later who, um, you know, took their needs, moved around. Um, the Broncos took their needs, got some quality players. Like, you didn't need a third tight end. Like, even if, even if you uh, utilized multiple tight ends previously, like, you utilized multiple tight ends because you didn't have the receivers to do it. Like, clearly, if you had three quality receivers, you weren't sitting one of them on the bench for a second tight end. Like, Well, they could have a cheerleader over there. <laughs> Jarvis Landry, Odell's biggest cheerleader. His favorite things are cheering on Odell, trying to be Odell, and, and playing Pro Bowl skill competition. He lives for that stuff. Playing winning football, Pro Bowl not dodgeball. So much. Yeah, but he, he can play some dodgeball exactly. Oh man, did you see him try to throw in that dodgeball competition though? I'm tired of Jarvis. Not quite. Go not quality. Somewhere else. Oh man, so I mean. I, I think we talked about it a little bit, the the Bengals. I mean, they were just so bad that even though they had a good offseason, that they're still real bad. And that's and that's okay. The, the Bengals are on the path that the Browns would have been on if they didn't get Odell Beckham and Baker wasn't running his mouth. Like, like right, he wasn't on all the commercials. Right. He was just... In, he was on like 17 commercials. He was on like eight. <laughs> yeah. At one point last season, he had more TV commercials running on TV than touchdown passes. <laughs> oh my God. And it was like week seven or something yeah. like that. And like, I, not just like week two, like week seven, he had more commercials running running on TV than... than but it's one of those things he's been so underrated his whole career. Yeah. I, like, but this is how, that's why he like, got there. But like the Cardinals head coach just let him walk. Yeah. He's so smart. He just let this future Heisman winner walk. Right. He went to Oklahoma. He, lit it up. As a walk-on still lit it up. Won the Heisman first pick and all of a sudden he's like, I want my due. Yeah. So I think that was, may have been part of it. Right. But it's time to, to buckle this up. Yeah. Get to work and, and fix some of the stuff you've got to do. Yeah. There's a big – I mean, we could rant about Cleveland for forever, but there, there needs to be a yeah. big well, – I've, I've wanted to ask this, and maybe we can save this for another pod, but the the statistics and analytics in football, like, do you think that has a place? You know where analytics work? When you put five good linemen out there <laughs> and, and you, you play within your scheme and don't do too much. Cause that's good analytics. <laughs> yeah, run the ball behind good linemen. <laughs> Sounds like a plan to me. Sounds <laughs> yeah. like winning football. I sat in one of these meetings run by this guy at the Browns and like Podesta? Yeah. They're super interesting. But at the same time, it's completely it's so much different than baseball. Baseball's from point A to point B and this person does this thing when the ball gets to him. Mm-hmm. And 98% chance it's going to go here. There is none of that in in football. And like this guy was like, okay, well, you know, Jarvis Landry, he, when you do a 12 yard out to him, he catches the ball 80% of the time but, but, on third down. Like, okay, cool. But like, we can't, we can't just do that. that. Like, we <laughs> can't just so run a 12-yard out every third down. Like you yeah. can't just, oh, third and 12. Yeah. Jarvis, 12-yard <laughs> out, everyone yeah. else, clear out. Yeah. And, There's no my, Madden either. And my <laughs> thinking was all of these guys, all of the coaches at the level of the NFL, like this is all subconscious to them. Oh, right? yeah, yeah. They, they don't need the analytics in front of them to be like, yeah, I know Jarvis is really good at running 12-yard outs. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, that's why we like, built it into yeah. our third down plan. Like, yeah. They don't take into account, because like, I've done a lot of game planning over the last you know, however many years, but like, you have to still practice all this stuff. Right. So like, they don't know unless they're telling them what they should be practicing in their script stuff and, and all their, which they're not. Mm-hmm. They're saying like, on third down, you should do this. Right. Which is easy to say. But every coach already knows what they want to do on third down, anyways. So. Yeah, that's and that's and it, like I said, I think for me the analytics in football, there's just too many variables, too many people, too many things happening every single play that doesn't happen you, in football. You know or what it baseball. is though? It's nerds trying to get themselves onto the field, affect the game, right? They're trying to do so much. Like well, I, I told them they should run that. Mm-hmm. 
He's like, well, you don't know anything about this. <laughs> well, I think I think it's the same thing with baseball. Well, I think when you look at basketball, Daryl Morey and the Houston Rockets kind of have it down a little bit more. Um, they have kind of taken analytics and they've looked at like, okay, what are the possibilities of us scoring and what are the most efficient shots? If these are the most efficient shots, let's try to get guys that are good at those things. Like if we think that to win a Super Bowl, we need guys that are good on third down. We should go get guys that are good on third down. That's quality use of analytics. Trying to say like, oh, we're going to throw it on this you know, five yard or 10 yard out. Like you don't know what defense that guy's running. If the guy is standing on the sideline and it comes out, like, are you going to throw this 80%? And like, no, that's a pick six. Like, oh man. All right. Well, good, good analytics are um, trying to talk about the thing that you have for the podcast. So you can try to stay on time. Um, So we got Buffalo Bills, Miami Dolphins, New England Patriots, New York Jets. Uh, we had Patriots winning the division in our pre-draft uh, discussions. I don't think that's happening unless they find some way to trade for like Andy Dalton and uh, AJ Green. Like I, I am, I am going to plant my flag that I will say I'm wrong if Jared Stidham leads them to a, a division title, but like that's not happening. And Brian Hoyer, like that's also not happening. So. I, I don't I don't look at their draft. I don't see uh, a very strong um, ability to put playmakers around those quarterbacks with limited abilities. They lost several players on defense where they filled a, a couple of needs. But, um, you know, they traded back. They got extra picks, which is great. They get extra swings. But, like, I'm I'm going to go out on a limb and say, like, I don't think the Patriots are quality drafters. Like, if, if you were to give them four draft picks and say pick four quality players, I don't think that they would get you four quality guys. Like, I think that the Patriots do a great job of getting themselves more opportunities so it masks the fact that those some of those guys aren't panning out. Like, how many of those guys are they picking up from other teams and they're putting them in their system because they understand how they can win, which is great. But, I mean, you're looking at a team where you have multiple opportunities to find guys in free agency that fit in your system, and they do a great job at that. But actually just drafting, like, the draft that they had, Tom Brady, I, I, I was listening to some podcast or something, and they, they talked about it, and it's and it's pretty evident, but, like, that draft that they, they picked Tom Brady, I think it was Cowherd. They didn't pick anybody else who made any kind of impact in that season. Like, they've had Tom Brady for 20-plus years. You haven't had to do anything with your quarterback, and you get the one quarterback who's going to take a pay cut so you can pay everybody you want. It generally doesn't happen. So when you come in and you have guys like the Chad Jacksons of the world, and, you know, you have all these other dudes that you're picking uh, late in drafts that aren't panning out, we don't see that because they're not really fitting the system. Like, the Patriots are not great drafters. Like they are great at giving themselves more opportunity so they can get volume and the volume will hit. But like I don't think that they're quality drafters and this draft was not a not a good one. Well, so you look at their history of drafting, right? They haven't done a great job. Right. And I don't think anyone would say they have. I think that where the disconnect is is where Bill Belichick thinks he's a very good coach, which which I think everyone will Agree that he's a very good coach. Oh, yeah. He does a really good job getting guys coached up, and they do a really good job of playing systematic uh, football in terms of what they do uh, scheme-wise. They don't draft anyone well. He, he can't pick a corner. They can't pick receivers. They, they miss old linemen all the time. They, they are right at developing o, uh, D linemen linebackers. But when they leave, they're all horrible. Because they only fit in like a very specific. Right. So that's why they all go play for Flores or uh, Patricia in Denver or uh, Detroit. Anyone who's kind of been a part of it, so at least they're doing the same thing. Mm-hmm. Like none of those guys go, you know, out of out of, out of that tree and, and are successful for the most part. Right. Yeah. So like, this this is based on last year's season, twenty nineteen. Uh, do you twenty twenty? Sorry, no. Yeah, twenty twenty is big. Got it. okay. Well, this is the current their current roster. Who's still on their team? And I would say ninety percent of them are after 
the fourth round, offense right. and defense. Like they, they have, have a lot of them, like, which is not surprising. Devin McCourty, Duke Dawson, uh, Deontay Hightower, Isaiah Wynn is a tackle, and other than that, Sony Michelle. Everybody else is fourth or later rounds. So like. I think they just try to be smarter than everyone, right? So their first pick this year was Kyle Duggar, who is a super athletic safety from a school you never heard of. Definitely never heard of it. Antoine Winfield Jr. was still on the board. Grant Delpit was still on the board. Yeah. Like, real players. And, and they go and pick Cam. Okay, that's fine if you really like him. Then they go pick two tight ends. <laughs> who are third? I mean, they're not, they're not. They weren't even the highest rated, and they picked two of them. They picked two of the not highest rated on consensus boards. Mm-hmm. They they just think they're going to go out and smart, outsmart everyone. And Tom Brady has really been masking a lot of that. But right. like you said, it could be a down year for them. Down year, but who's taking the division? The Bills. Um, the Bills. Well, the Bills. I think they don't vote with that. The Dolphins can go kick rocks. Uh, I'm so mean, mad I, that they love the Chargers. <laughs> I am so bitter about that. The Dolphins are trash, and they should not be number two. Yeah, so before the Chargers, like I'm not even sold on the Bills winning it, but I'm more sold the Patriots didn't get better. Yeah, they didn't and, get better. and they weren't very good It'll be to, to begin with. Yeah. So like by default, they can't be as good. Yeah. So I mean, like they're just going to fall back by default and like slightly. I mean, well not slightly. Yeah, and, and like not the Bills Tom Brady losing Tom Brady is obviously huge. But I still uh, think it's going to be a battle. I don't think it's still going to be like a guarantee yeah. the Bills are going to get I'm yeah, I'm not guaranteeing. I wouldn't like I wouldn't put money on who's going to win this division. Right? I'm not going to say that the Patriots aren't going to win it. You like you wouldn't put money on that? No, just because we're still talking about the Dolphins, the Bills, and the Jets. You want yeah. Like, like I would, I would, put money, I'll put I would money on put the Bills. Like a large division. sum of I'm money. Like, to put on. <laughs> what do you want? Put pick a number. But, wait, you don't think the no, Bills are going to win the division? But like, no. I wouldn't be confident either I'll take way. Twenty bucks. Like, the Bills. Like. But like more about the like the got, confidence either way. Like a, if I took the bet the other way, I wouldn't be like okay, it's my money for sure. Like I would be nervous either way, just I because I don't think I don't think sure the Bills are as good as money. as good as we think they're. And Josh Allen, this is his time to take over if he wants, and I'm not sure that he can. He he doesn't throw well enough. So real quick on your guys's bet. This is just the Bills versus the field. Bills versus the division. Yeah. So yeah. so if anybody else wins the division, then you lose. Yeah. All right, cool. Um, but the, the, I, but yeah. not, like, no, one's, else. no one's convinced the Jets are going to win it. The Dolphins no. are still building. It's like yeah. Yeah. Jet or Bills Patriots. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Patriots are still going to win. Yeah. The, they're going to yeah. figure out a way to still win the if, division. If the Patriots trade for Andy Dalton... Or I know that they said they don't want Cam Newton, but Cam Newton gets signed or they make some extensive quarterback upgrade because that's the biggest issue here. Like we can be we can we, we can be rah rah all we want. People can talk about Jared Stidham. Oh, he would be in a top four quarterback in this class. I saw somebody spew that nonsense today. Like, no no no. It was a bad quarterback class last year. It wasn't great. And then this year, it it was clearly better at the top. It, he wasn't going to be a top player in this year's draft. So, like, let's get that. The out only of the, way. the like, only thing that gives me pause about making any bets either way, Bill Belichick is the best defensive coach in the league, and they got I worse care. on defense. True. I don't care who they're but they were one though. So even if they got worse, they should be a top ten defense. Yeah, if they're give or take. Yeah. Unless they're that much worse, but but no no, they, they might be that much worse on offense. No, no they got I, I'm not nobody. I'm not saying that, but they won games with Garoppolo, Castle, Brissett. But who were they throwing to? Area it, 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 they still did. Josh McDaniels was very good at calling plays. Of course. So the fact that like, I just wouldn't want to bet against those guys and like put my money on Josh Allen more than anything. Like I, I understand. like Josh Allen's fine. Yeah, but like you want you want Belichick, McDaniel's, and some guys 
or you want to put all your money on Josh Allen. Yeah. Like, it's more of, like, so uncomfortable either way. Yeah. Like, I would, I'm just going to push myself out of the game. <laughs> and it's, I don't want any part of it. Yeah. It's, it's a very interesting argument, though, because it, it's from, at least a Dante and I standpoint, like, a true test of the don't pay a quarterback, don't pay, you know, don't pay the the high end guy who's going to yeah. take thirty three million dollars mm-hmm. of cap space. It's mm-hmm. like, let it all ride. Trust your coaches that they can fill in, you know, anyone into this position and make them look good. I mean, and, and that's truly what the Patriots are this year. I think. Let me float one thing out there, Patriots. We think that that they're trying to win this year. The Belichick Brady breakup. What if they just want to suck? Get Trevor Lawrence. I people have been talking about that though. Dante called it like three podcasts ago. That yeah, they bro. were gonna tank Watch and be the guy. worst. Yes. Watch how bad we're gonna be. Yeah, bro. Hey, we're gonna. We've been the best for years. We're gonna be the worst how, this how, year. Josh McDaniels is basically head coach in waiting. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Why would he call plays to win if he knows he can get Trevor Lawrence? For the rest of his future. life, I know. Basically, right. For the rest of his life, yeah, the, the next twenty I'm years, put potentially. Put my name out there as as a bad coach. Watch this: <laughs> zero <laughs> points a game. Hey, I mean, I wouldn't put any. <laughs> <laughs> Their defense scores fourteen. <laughs> so but, but offensively, zero points a game. They're not going to stop everyone. They go three and three and thirteen. First uh, pick, you, Trevor Lawrence. Well, I mean, it's like the rebuild is complete. <laughs> <laughs> that stat last year that like. The Patriots' defense alone went like seven, eight, and one, or something like that. Yeah, the yeah. offense they never, never took touched the field, field. Yeah. never <laughs> scored a touchdown. <laughs> they went like they still went seven, which, eight, and which one. is un- what if, ungodly. What if they stat. just both decided they're going to be bad? Ed. So Belichick's end of his career. He's got a quarterback. Thinks they can win with Lawrence. Go out on top, hand it right at McDaniel's, who set the whole thing up himself too. Yeah, and all of a sudden. They're back in business. Should have used could... this for the conspiracy episode. <laughs> <laughs> no one, no one thought suck. they were going to be that bad in the draft. Well, and nobody thought. Well, I think we all at that point when we made that episode thought that there was still a chance Tom Brady ended up going back because I think yeah. didn't we do that pod before? Yeah, Brady it was, was, bef- yeah, it was yeah before the yeah. announcement. So uh, it, we'll we'll have to see. We'll have to see. I mean, I think right now at least. At least half of us think that the Bills are going to win the division, potentially at least be the leaders. Um, I'm still reserving that if the Patriots get an actual quarterback, not like Mickey Mouse, like, you know, (laughs) caricature quarterback, like if they get an actual quarterback, I think that they can still make some noise. But um, our final AFC division, a lot of changes in this one. Uh, Texans, Colts, Jacksonville. Titans, they had a C minus draft, B plus, A minus, and B plus, respectively. That C minus was, you know, due to not having a first round pick because of the Tunsil trade and also trading away your second round pick to get Brandon Cook. So we'll start with them. Like, what well, is Bill O'Brien like, doing there? This should be the new intro to this podcast. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome into the Bill O'Brien Twitter podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but like, uh, this dude, this this dude is the GM. But why? Why exactly? He's not doing anything good. They tried all these picks for Tunsil, who all he did was false start last year. He had I, I don't know the exact stat, but he had double digit false starts Which as a professional left tackle. And so then they paid him. Taught. Then they paid him. Okay, so like, I don't even, I, I couldn't tell you they drafted. Um, and I'm going to look it up right here. But like, so Bill O'Brien, you're trash. That's all there is to it. Uh, this is going to be the, this is going to be the <laughs> intro to the podcast. Well, welcome to the Bill O'Brien haters podcast. The, the thing that was, the thing that's crazy though, and uh, I, once again, I listened to a lot of podcasts and somebody talked about it and it was kind of funny. Deshaun Watson might be on like the Cam Newton MVP train. Like, I'm gonna just basically be Superman and do everything. And it's so terrible that like that has to be the case. Cause we were talking about it when we did our um our team breakdowns, and I brought up the point like Deshaun Watson is gonna win two or three games for you that you have no business winning. And like 
they're doing it in the free agency and they're doing it in the draft. Like they're going to walk into the season and say like, Hey, Deshaun, um, be an MVP caliber guy or we're going to be dog shit this year. So like, I, I feel bad for him. Like this is, this is what it was with Andrew Luck at the Indianapolis Colts. But they didn't draft anyone that's going to help them. Right. A D tackle from TCU. Tired of the TCU stuff, man. Make a ball game. <laughs> like, like, like they had so many dudes drafted early. Like be above five hundred. And from there, from Florida, a tackle or, or and linebacker. Then, oh yeah, edge rusher. Linebacker, edge rusher, tackle from UNC. Corner from Penn State in the fourth. Best yeah. pick is Isaiah Coulter, Rhode Island. That's the best. So pick their best make. pick was a one double A receiver. Yeah, that was the best player that they got. And because <laughs> he's actually kind of nice, but I don't care how nice he is. Is he Hopkins? <laughs> no, he's not Nuke. Is he Kiki Kuti? <laughs> no. Like, so is he going to play? So they have how many guys they have are going to actually play? Things too. I mean, at receiver, I mean, you're looking at Fuller, Stills, on, I think, a one-year deal, Brandon Cooks. All those guys are injury-prone, so Coulter's going to play, guys. Bro, He's going to get on the field. Tell me who this is. Isaiah Coulter, draft comp, Marques Wilson. <laughs> I don't watch it in state. Oh. Where does he play? <laughs> he plays the same place I play. <laughs> exactly. So that's not a good I'm pick. Sticks. <laughs> that's not a good pick. Oh, it can't be a good pick if he's doing the same job as us. <laughs> oh. oh man. Well, I think he, the Colt. I think the Colts definitely did a, a good job um, positioning themselves. You know, to try to get better this season. Um, I think the Jacksonville Jaguars definitely made strides as well. I mean, they. A couple of years ago, they had a very strong defense. Blake Bortles did an okay job, didn't mess it up. Uh, Minshew is that same kind of quarterback who is moderately athletic, is not going to mess it up. If they don't ask him to do too much and they just funnel all of these assets into defense and stifle you there, like Jacksonville has a shot. But um, I I think the Colts kind of separated themselves. What do you think about that, Jamar? Um. Definitely. Um, you know, the Colts, I think, you know, when we were looking back at how we did our initial mock draft, I don't think the Colts, and I can't remember actually where they were on that list at all, even if they did make it. Did they make it into the list? I don't, I don't, I don't think know. so. I, think I that, don't know if they made it in. I think that they were one of the first outs because we gave it to the Titans. We didn't put it there, no. Texans. I don't know. With adding, you know, uh, uh, Pittman and Taylor – and, you know, filling in some other spots here and, you know, what Phillip, if he has a good season, can do. I don't know. I kind of – I'm having some second thoughts about the Colts in this division right now. Um, I think if, if the stars align, they can make some noise. Mm-hmm. I think so, too. I think of the teams in this division, they got the best, right? right. So they got him and they got Taylor. They, they helped their secondary with Blackman. They added a couple uh, – Linemen, linebacker types, and then they they got Eason. wasn't the biggest Eason fan, but you give Philip he's two. Trash. No, no, I'm not saying he's not Eason. He's trash. No, no, no. <laughs> you give him a couple of years. No, no, I'm, I'm just saying you give Zero him a couple years. years. He's trash. <laughs> but, but they haven't put any draft capital in since uh, Andrew Luck. Yeah, and that's so maybe you know they know like. This team knows that Phillips won to two years. Mm-hmm. If they like the guy, they can play him. If not, just draft someone else. Yeah. Next that, two years in the first couple rounds. And that's the beauty of him being a fourth-round pick. Right. It, you can make that decision. But, like, uh, what I think is going to happen is, like, Phillip is going to play pretty solid for two years. They're going to be right in that playoff picture. And then Eason's going to come in and they're be like, uh, we have these prospects on the board, but Eason's look really great in practice, and they're going to go into the tank. They're going to go into the tank in four years. If Eason's starting, they're going to go into the tank, and they're going to have to start it all over. But also, if you can't figure that out, watching the guy for two years, yeah. then you deserve to be bad. Exactly. So, like, I'm, I'm not going to feel bad for them if they're bad because they're playing Eason. Right. I'm going to feel bad for them if they thought Philip was going to be good. 
And he's Philip. <laughs> 17, 18 picks, Philip. Yeah. He's about to come out swinging this year. I'm uh, feeling. Hell, people who leave the Chargers go on to do very well for themselves. <laughs> you know I'm what? just saying. You know what? I forgot I'm about just that. saying. When we, when we made that bet with Adam about Philip Rivers versus Tom Brady, I forgot that, like, there's, like, that stigma, like, he about to be MVP this year. <laughs> <laughs> like, Philip Burns is like, you know what? I'll show you, Charlie. But also, no, like, also, they didn't have Gronk yet. People. Yeah, true. So, so the... Adam, Adam, just send me the money <laughs> now. <laughs> Yo, All those leave, bets, send them now. People leave the Chargers and go win Super Bowls. Yeah. Can you imagine if the Colts win the Super Bowl? Not oh, my chance. God. Not a chance. Not a chance. What, I love Col- Frank Colts Price, versus but... Bucks in the Super Bowl. <laughs> no, I mean, one team no one team. wants to watch Grandpa play. Like both grandpas like, yeah, get right. out of the Super Bowl. Yeah, I don't want to watch either one of them. <laughs> but that'd be the most watched Super Bowl ever. I mean, with all those people from Indianapolis and Baltimore, and then all of the people. I mean, Tampa Bay is hosting the Super Bowl this year, so it'd be the first time ever somebody played in their own Super Bowl. So, if I'm, Tampa I'm, makes it, it's the most watched Super Bowl ever. Yeah. I mean, playing so it doesn't matter who they're playing. It'd be parties in Florida. If you oh. throw Kansas City in that mix, oh, oh man. Oh. Roger Goodell. Grandpa oh, versus the young music. kid. Oh, yeah. They love that shit. <laughs> <laughs> they'd, be like, they'd be like, the passing of the guard. I can say it now. The passing of the guard. Tom Brady mm-hmm. to Patrick Mahomes. It's like our, our old son to our new son. <laughs> like, it's like they love that man, Patrick Mahomes. Like, oh my goodness. Oh, but. <laughs> All right. I mean, I think I think we're all convinced Indianapolis Colts did well for themselves this this season or this off season. Uh, Tennessee, they, they didn't they didn't do bad. Um, they they hit some needs. They uh, are still on the grit and grind. Like we're gonna try to build on defense, build in the trenches, which is great. Um, I I would have liked to see them, you know, kind of. Uh, get a little bit more dynamic on offense. I mean, I know that they made uh, some picks there, but um, nothing that was like a really big splash. Um, I mean, like I said, they... How about, they... How about Cole McDonald? How about Cole McDonald? I mean, I mean, Do I mean... we think he's like Tannehill Jr.? I mean, he cut off his dread, so like he's not cool to me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I admit, yeah, that's fine. But I like the Wilson Fulton one too. Wilson was, I think we talked about this at some point that he may have been as good as uh, Andrew Thomas. Andrew Thomas, yeah, yeah. yeah. And Fulton was, you know, he definitely I mean, fell. That was a good slot. That's for because them. they were watching him play with uh, Stingley. Stingley. Yeah, Stingley's gonna be. Two the seasons truth. from now, 2022 20, draft, yep. Stingley. Top Number five pick. Corner. <laughs> yep. Number one corner. Uh, but we can all agree that the best part of Tennessee's draft and probably what ugh. boosted their grade was the Power Ranger and the blonde mullet in the background. <laughs> 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 it's like, what, what, were, what were they doing over there? <laughs> yeah, I mean, Hey, I like Mike Vrabel's kids. Uh, they got some wild personality. Oh, my God. To me, that, bad. I know, right? <laughs> that boosted. Neither of them dudes are going to be in the league. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, um, so I mean, that that's it. We had a long one here. We're going to split these up into a couple pods. But, um, like I said, we'll do some more um, discussion on, you know, these teams and um, who's going to be successful next year? We'll, we'll do some more mock drafts, some more fantasy stuff, and um, you know, some more listener question things. Until um, next time, this is Dante, Tony, Mark, and Kyle, and we're out. <laughs> <laughs>